Three, two, one. Hey, internet friends. This is Magic Brad with the Synergy Cafe, Synergy Lifestyle Academy, and Synergy Collaborative. And I've got my friend David Averin. Are you there, David? I am here, Magic Brad. What's Thanks for having me on the show today. You're over on the west side of the world, aren't you? West Coast. No, I'm west for somebody who's east, they think west, but I'm just south of Denver. So Denver's not west. Well, we say west because it's kind of cowboyish oh, west. Wild, wild west out there. It's not a ranch wild. land or something, but we're kind of close to the middle. Anyway, I'm just south of Denver, Colorado in Castle Rock. And uh, it is a beautiful, sunny, 90 degree day. And, uh, and at some point, I'm going to go out and mow the lawn. Oh, that's always fun. Yeah. Don't you got people for that? You know what? It, I'm the people. That's, that's how I keep my youthful energy and glow. There you go. You got to do it. I'm uh, 62, almost 63, living in an apartment, and I don't want to shovel. I don't want to rake. I don't want to mow. I don't want to do any of that stuff. <laughs> no, I got you. Anyways, David, I uh, looked and watched some of your videos and things, and you're all about customers, which I think is very cool because it's almost the only thing that's kind of like a lot of people are into lead generation, lead generation, lead generation. If you yeah. take care of your customer, the leads will come in. I think the customers will start referring you and it's really more about taking care of your customer. Well, and it's different today though, because we, we've changed so much. Uh, you know, we always hear people in business to say, listen, technology will change and markets will change, but people don't change. Are you kidding me? People, of course we change. We've changed like crazy. We, since the iPhone came out 13 years ago, our expectations for immediate access sure. and expediency. When we were kids and we didn't know how to spell something, and you're like, mom, how do you spell campaign? What would mom say? Google it. Look it up in the dictionary, right? Nobody looks it up. You just ask, hey, Siri, how do you spell campaign, right? Or hey, Alexa, she's going to come on right now. I know it. Um, so so we, we've changed. We, we're impatient. We, we want what we want when we want it because we can generally get it. And so oftentimes today, as I travel the world, 24 countries now, speaking on customer experience and how do we differentiate ourselves, I talk a lot about just being remarkably easy to do business with. You know, yeah. most of our businesses are not set up for wow moments. We're not all Nordstrom. You know, if you're selling an electronic component to an electronic manufacturer, there's not a lot of wow moments in that. But if you have a complicated process, if you make people stay on hold for 45 minutes, if you go to the grocery store and they want you to do self-checkout and you've got a grocery cart full of things, you ask for shrimp instead of chicken on a Caesar salad and they say, no, sorry, you're not easy to do business with. So a lot of my message is about saying yes more often, taking a nine step process and converting it to a six step process. And all of it sort of driven my new book, which is called Why Customers Leave and How to Win Them Back. Forbes just, in Forbes, it was just named one of their top 10 of the year because it's resonating. We're in and five and the, new the, languages, right? And the frustrated news travels probably faster than the good news does. If Way faster. Can. Listen, you and I grew up in business and we heard this is what we used to call guest relations philosophy, right? And it went something like this. And everybody who's watching or listening heard this. The average person with a positive experience tells two or three people, but somebody with a negative experience tells 10, right? We all, today we tell thousands. Exactly. Today we tell millions. So the things that you do to frustrate or piss off your customers, intentionally or not, they'll get to tell everybody and they'll never come back because we don't have to. What I do is sometimes when I can't get through to the helpline and stuff, I will find them on Twitter and I'll ask the question there and they jump yeah. on it because it's public now. <laughs> right, right, right. They, oh, all you have to do is put um, hashtag united at the end of a post and they will respond within 30 seconds. A real person. Try it. Trust me. It, it works um, because they, they've all been through it. So Today, we have to really take a step back and look at our customer's journey, every point of contact, and ask some really basic but profound questions. We gotta ask, is that the way it should be done? Like, it's the way we do it, and it's the way our competitors do it, but is it the way that it should be done, or the way our customers want? Because we're designing our customer path, right? We're trying to control as much as we can. They buy here, they research, they, they customize, they pay, they, they get their drink or sit down. It makes sense if you're Chipotle, but most of us don't have an, an easy process. And the biggest problem is your customers haven't read your employee manual. Yeah. They just know how they want to buy. And we're, we're way, way, way too rigid today. So we got to, part of my message is just saying yes 
as often as possible. No, or, I, or let me I, let me tell you what we can do, right? I think also this all this technology. Some of these people get into it so much and think, oh, it's so easy, it's automated, and it does all this stuff. But what it does is it gets into this the customer, their experience for it. It's it's not working the way that I think it should work, and it gets right. frustrating. Well, but we designed it. Like you go to your website and how complicated. People are like, why it's right? I couldn't find it on your site. Well, of course it was right there. Go along to the top. It's the third one over. Just go to the drop down menu and it's the fourth. Are you kidding? I didn't just don't make me navigate your HR structure to get somebody on the phone. And then once well, you the do biggest, learn it, they change it, and you go, What the hell? It's on the left hand oh, side now. Oh, please listen as our menu has changed. Really? You're gonna make <laughs> me navigate your HR? I have a question that's gonna take nine seconds. Don't make me wait 45 minutes for the answer. I agree. We are, it's the same thing. It was like chat features, right? Now we're all going to AI chatbots. And bot, of course, is short for robot. It's not even a real person. And I've been, I was just speaking in, in Bogota, Colombia at a, a customer experience conference. They were all talking about AI, artificial intelligence. I was in, in Abu Dhabi. And it was all about how do we extract people and automate. It's like, no, at, at least give us the option. I'm not naive that there isn't going to be that aspect. But whenever I have a question, it is never a frequently asked question. You ever notice that? You know, I mean, I just give me, give me the option of a real person to talk to, but they're driving people away. My, my big mantra is what I say on stage and otherwise, your biggest source of lost revenue is the customer or client that you never knew about because they, they went to your site and they clicked away because they couldn't find it or there was no phone number, which is the worst thing that companies well, Imagine do. how many of those that are missing that are not coming in contact. I just had a little bit of an epiphany. Instead of the frequently asked question, what if they came up with frequently answered questions? Yeah. It, and then have something right there that has an option to talk to a real person. You ever go to, and, and I know the people who are watching or listening, your fans, the fans of Magic Brad, we've all been through this. You go to a website, you have a question, just a simple question. There is no freaking phone number. Like there's no phone number anywhere. You know, they made a conscious decision. We're not going to let our customers call us. Like literally, like literally you're that good that we're not, but they put a contact form and they think it's brilliant and it's the worst move a company can do. It's the only way to get hold of you is having a contact form because we think, well, they'll just fill out the form. We won't get bothered by those cars, calls. They'll go to this, the same person. We can capture their information, right? For future marketing. Here's the problem. 87% of people will not fill out a contact form. 87%. We just go to a competitor. We just call somebody else. And they're like, no, no, no. People fill out the form. You have no idea how many people don't. And if they, but do, they, if think, they do fill it out, they, sometimes they won't use a real email address. Oh, it's <laughs> just, just right. <laughs> right. But it's it just, no, we just want an answer now because somebody else will give us an answer now. So, so in, in all of your travels and talking with all these yep. people, how, what kind of response do you get? How, how come they don't know that? How they don't understand, the companies don't understand this. How come they don't understand? Do they not? Well, and, and, do they not that is the right question. A, they don't do it from a user's point of view. Have they ever tried the other end before? Right. Well, they, here's the, here's, the, it's the right question. It's the right question. They think they are, and they think they talk about being very customer focused, but it's not about being customer focused, it's about being customer centric. And there's a difference. It's really understanding the life of your customer, how they want to buy, how they, but we're trying to, here's why, it, here's why it happens. And somebody asked me in a call, if we've been talking about this for 30 years, how could it possibly be getting worse? And it's getting worse because companies are trying to control what they can, because there's so much, I mean, pandemics are out of our control and technology and competitors will always be out of our control. So if we can design, something that makes sense, that customer journey, and they do all, then, right, then, it, then we can have a greater level of predictability of behavior and purchasing and revenue and profit. As I said, the problem is your customers haven't read your employee manual. And so what makes sense for us doesn't leave room for flexibility. And so when we ask for a special order at a restaurant, sorry, we don't do special order. Why? You know why? Because they don't want to face the cook who doesn't want to do it. Do you know who doesn't care what the cook wants to do? Oh yeah, everybody. Yeah. Just say yes, right? You know, well, sure, charge, charge a few extra bucks. Yeah, customers well, but, right, but here's the thing. They're trying to just control as much, but so much today, and here's what's really crazy. We always had, to, we were always compared against the best in our industry, right? We had to be better than most in our industry. We're being compared today against industries and, and, and companies that have nothing to do with what we do. But somebody says, when is that? We're, I'm trying to get the, uh, the estimated time on, on the delivery. We're not sure when it's going to arrive. 
how can you not be sure? Uber knows. Let's see. The car is right now at this intersection. They are 11 minutes away. Why can't you do that? You don't offer overnight delivery? Amazon does. Soon they're going to do 30-minute delivery with drones. I mean, it's coming within a year. Why can't you do that? Now, it's not a fair comparison, but it's the real one. We're just used to it's getting an answer. expectation. Yeah. So how many people's business operation, as they engage with their customers, how many, how many of them have it optimized for speed? Right? We're not all, we don't all have wow moments, but can you get them what they want fast? Can you get them something? You know, and it doesn't mean that, that the answer is always yes, but, the all, but it always has to be like, well, let me tell you what I can do. Like, I mean, if you have a vegan restaurant, somebody wants a buffalo burger, that's a hard no. But most of us can say yes, right? B to B, B to C. Um, we have to empower our people to be more flexible. Well, there's a two we... of, uh, of crunching time. I heard of a guy that was a, a consultant for an airport, and what they were running into is when person picked up their bag or yeah, picked up their baggage to do something else or what, whatever it was. The distance. I know it's, time it's, was it's long. Steve Shapiro, right? Well, Isn't that Steve Shapiro's thing that they were they were thinking that they had to wait too long? So they made it a longer thing, and then they were on time to, to right. reach the checkout. Yeah, brilliant colleague Steve Shapiro talks about yeah. about creativity, innovation, and that people felt like they were waiting too long for their bags, but they they went through the process. They could not make it faster, so they actually slowed people down getting to yeah. baggage claim. And when they got there, the bags were there, and they thought, "How fast is this?" It's exactly. a wonderful, innovative way of thinking. So if you and just so entertain your customer more than that stupid music that they listen to. If there was right. something that was entertaining, they wouldn't be so irritated. Yeah, but, I, but it, it also comes down to just asking some more basic questions. Is that the way it should be done? Could we do that point of contact better or faster or smarter? Can we eliminate some of that friction? Can we understand our customer's day and their journey a little bit more so you understand why they may have a level of frustration? or maybe need some visibility into the ordering process so they can look on their own on an app to find out when it's, when it's gonna be delivered. It's just, here's the, here's the only positive thing about a worldwide pandemic, no matter when you're watching or listening to this, is I think history will record this as a time of remarkable innovation. Because That's a buzzword. Have, we're, That's a buzzword. Right, we're, That's learn, a we're learning how to do things differently. I mean, evidenced by this conversation. Be before the coronavirus, I did probably one call out of five on Zoom. Now I do nine out of 10. Yeah. Because what a wonderful way you and I can see each other face to face. We're having we this conversation. To, to innovate. Like I've got uh, yeah. some entertainer friends. What this one guy did was he created a thing. He calls it Tar and Turf Magic Show. He does it on your driveway or on your lawn. You Love it. Do the show and you can watch your picture window. Yeah. But for the reality, for those of us in the meetings industry, let's be honest. This is a reasonable accommodation short-term accommodation. It is a horrible long-term strategy. Um, great for, for employee meetings in your office, but for the rest of us, for those annual conventions and conferences and the serendipity that comes from conversations, unexpected conversations in the hallways between meetings and sessions and learning what's new in your industry and hands-on and real keynotes, um, this is a poor substitute. We, we have to get back in the same room. I think um, it'll with open distance up. distance and safety. Oh, it, it, it will. And I, and I can't wait because we have, to, um, we have to meet. We're, we're social people. We have to learn. We have to compete against those who, who are competing against us. And so I'm, I'm just such a, a big champion of the meetings industry and the travel industry for what so we this do. This is a little bit of a sidebar. But sure. uh, what came into my head was you showed me earlier your, your book. You've got a book. What, this kind of book? book? Magic book right there, yes. Why Customers Leave and How to Win I mean, Them Back? That's scary in and of itself with this pandemic thing. A lot of customers left. Right. But well, a lot of customers left because they, they couldn't to. get to us. Exactly. And so the, the challenge, a lot of the, the messaging coming out of it is all about the safety, which granted is really, really important. Sanitize, here's what we're doing. Let's not forget about what makes us great. Let's not forget about balancing the message of here's how we can help you live a better life, be better in your business, be prettier or more engaging or whatever it is your product or service is, B2B or B2C. So in the um, event yeah. industry, the, they need yeah. to know how to be so that those customers don't leave. They come back after this uh, virus thing passes, will they come back? Otherwise, well, they're here, gonna go somewhere else. Well, and they're, but they're gonna need us more than ever. I think we're already getting a measure of Zoom fatigue. 
I think people are people are having a hard time sitting through all day meetings looking yep. at their at their computer. But, but that's screen. kind of my point. Like event venues, if you're not treating your customers good, they might go to a different venue and say, "Heck with yeah. you." Yeah, or just better. making it an easier process. Like, how much are we learning? Like an in innovation, as we talked about, of things that we can do touchless. We can register online. Hilton hotels now. I can go and I can I can open up my door walking from the elevator. I can hear it open. I can just do it on the app. I don't have to touch anything. Now that kind of distancing isn't going to go on forever, but right now it's important, but it's going to streamline registration processes, maybe fewer lines. That's awesome. That's great for us. That's great for attendees. And so I'm loving some of the innovation, but, but understand from a travel perspective, we can't just look at our own sliver. You know, people have to feel safe about the entire journey before they get on an airplane. I'm doing a lot of work with the travel industry with airports, with event planners and others as well, and realizing that we have to have a collective voice. Um, but here's the other thing I'll throw out real quickly for, for those in the event industry and travel, which many of us are, is that they need us more than ever, especially the destination management companies and others, is we've got the bases covered. I mean, it used to be in our business spread, um, contingency planning meant weather related, right? Sure. Do we have somewhere to go if it rains? Contingency now is what happens if a government shuts down? What's, what happens when you know, there's a challenge with the venue and the distancing? There's a, they need event professionals more than ever to navigate those waters, to give them a sense of peace, to help those, those companies, those, those associations and others breathe easier, knowing that somebody's got every contingency, every scenario covered. So I that's think that's really for, a for, good point in that yeah. um, a, a company, their core business, like Chipotle or whatever, they're a restaurant doing all that kind of stuff. When they have their meeting, they're not in the meeting business. They're right. in the food business. So let the meeting planners and event planners use the innovation that they learned when they're doing things for other companies. Yeah. And there'll be, and there'll be a hybrid. I mean, I don't think um, that, that virtual is going to take over. I think there will always be an element now but we have to meet in person, but even the in-person meetings, there will be an element of virtual. There will be people who cannot travel. So they will I'm live stream, of, they totally will live stream events as I, well. I like yeah. that word hybrid. I'm in the process of doing that right now because I've got my event planner expo in March. It's way off in the distance, but I'm creating an online, sort of running them parallel with each other until we yeah. get to March. Well, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm finishing up my whole new virtual presentation studio and white screen and green screen and multi-camera. That's just an accommodation because there will always be a need for that. But even the live events, and I'm really fortunate that the fall and the, and the and 2021 are booked really solid right now, that they will also live stream those events. I know it. You know, there will be an element of it. I think meeting professionals have to remember, don't severely discount the virtual because you will incentivize people not to go. They have to be priced fairly close. If the regular event is $1,000, for example, the virtual one can't be $100. Because then people are like, oh, I'll just stay home. Encourage people to go. We have to travel. We have to meet. Because that's the best learning that we do face-to-face. -face. And my keynotes, they're very humorous. It's very entertaining. But I use that strategically to temper a pretty tough message. Yeah, about I watch what it some of your videos. You're very, yeah. you're very good well, at but, uh, but, it, but I'm not a motivational speaker. I mean, it's a, I'm a business speaker. And yeah. so there's a tough message about what it takes to compete and win. But that interaction and the humor, it works so much better live. Um, in the same room. Totally get it. Being able to connect with that audience and audience management and all that kind of stuff too, for sure. Yes, you do. Well, David, I don't like doing these too long because people have that commodity of time that you know, they don't have much time. So I keep these kind of tight. How do we get a hold of you? I'm assuming you've got a website and uh, could you show of us your book again? Yes, of course. Well, you can look me up at davidavrin.com. You can see my name here on the Zoom call at the bottom of the screen there, A-V-R-I-N, davidavrin.com. See a video of what I do and everything else. Um, I also want to throw it really quickly. I have this initiative that I launched. It's like, I think the, the best thing I've ever done. And I'm really excited as we're now in four languages around the world. It's called the Customer Experience Advantage Morning Huddle. And it's a once a week, just get together with your team and talk about one aspect of, of your customers and your journey and who they are and what they want. And it's done for you. And it's super cheap. But it's for me, it's the impact. And uh, if you look it up, CustomerExperienceAdvantage.com. Take a look at it. There's some sample videos, and I'm super excited about the initiative. The response has been awesome. That's and then once again, my new book, what's the, Why what's Customers the Leave. What was the word on it? Customer Experience, Customer Experience 
advantage. Customer experience com. advantage. Customer experience. Advantage. Okay. And the Take book. Take a look. And the book. Yeah. The book. And the book. Why customers leave. Four languages and Kindle and everything. And it's super, you'll hear my voice in it. But, um, and then look up Magic Brad. He's awesome. He's and everywhere. he's everywhere. <laughs> Just and I appreciate, I appreciate the chance to, to break some bread here virtually. Well, thank you, David. I will put the well. links for all that stuff in the blogs that I propagate out. And uh, when you see them, if you could uh, share them also, and that's what I would be happy to do in. so. And we'll tell them. And everybody world. remember, click to subscribe to Magic Brad. <laughs> Very important. Okay, perfect. Thank you, David. All right, Peace. friend.